a druid in psychologist's clothing, E. Graham Hughes' Secret Druidic Doctrine, written by Ian C. Edwards, and this is published by Anathema Publishing. So this is Anathema Publishing's latest format. First of all, I'll, I'll say for those of you who aren't going to stay until the end, I'm going to say that this is an incredibly important book, and I'll be talking about why in a moment. But first of all, I want to draw your attention to this new format that Anathema Publishing are embracing. So until now, Anathema Publishing have been doing two mid-level editions, the standard hardcover and the collector's edition. And since this year, they've started to say that they will no longer be doing two mid-tier editions, but only one with the two qualities rolled into one, as it were. Well, while the price point, which is incredible given what you're getting here, may reflect that, I'm going to say that this, to me, is one of their most beautiful mid-tier books. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this spine, the work that's been done on this faux leather. And it's so hard to convey to you like what this actually looks like. I'm not sure if it's painted. I guess it must be painted. But uh, it's just so beautiful and it feels so nice and textured. And then there's the, the cloth. And I've said before that I, I actually prefer cloth covers. And so here you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the, the durability of this faux leather spine and the tactile feel of the cloth. And actually the tactile feel of this faux leather spine is so interesting, so nice. And, it you know, it's kind of bobbly and... and absolutely love this absolutely love this and then i'll show you the end papers here uh, which are kind of this silky material here really lovely it feels feels like silk it's uh, it's really really nice and then you have uh, the the signature of the author ian c edwards right there on the card as was the case with the collector hardcover editions previously right but now there are only collector hardcover editions so this is really, really wonderful. So maybe one more thing to show you about the format here, of course, is the lovely ribbon and head and tail bands. And of course, the paper, which um, is Anathema's special stock, which they get shipped in from the Netherlands, I believe, uh, just because they want the highest grade paper and that's where they can get the highest grade paper so yeah I mean this really is a work of art externally now internally this I feel is the wrong title for this book it's absolutely the right title after having read the book but I don't feel that this title a druid in psychologist's clothing will draw the right attentions right this is an incredibly important work. Um, who among you viewers, and by all means, leave a comment down below if you knew, but who knew that the majority of Alan Watts' teachings can be traced back to Eric Graham Hugh? They were close friends, and Eric Graham Hugh was one of Alan Watts's formal teachers. And reading about this and about how, uh, Hugh, not Hugh, how, excuse me, uh, you know, it's, it's shocking, isn't it, that the name is not known. And, and in fact, this whole introduction talks to a great extent about why he isn't so well known as a psychologist. I say so well known, why he's been hidden, basically. And John Michael Greer writes a, a very to the point preface, uh, and so does Stanton Marlin, just talking about why this guy is completely obscure. And so <laughs> uh, what title would be a better title? I really can't say, but I feel like the philosophy of this guy is so important and so, I say important because it's my philosophy, essentially. Uh, he rejected isms, right? He rejected the doctrines, uh, whether they were of organized religion or of scientism. He, he recognized that the human psyche was something that could be helped by tools, but by shackling the human psyche to terms. One was essentially freeing maybe from, from certain aspects, but then binding uh, from others. And so there's a big section here about 
think he calls it Arwen, as the big mind, basically, as the, the divinity beyond the divine, that which the Taoists call the Tao, which um, Kabbalists call it the Ein Sof, and so on. And you may have seen my video some time ago, uh, some weeks ago, I guess, about perennialism and about my own encounter with the divine. And that is precisely what Eric Graham Howe was pointing to himself. And he was using the languages available to him to do this. He used the language of Druidism. In fact, he writes a book at the very end of his life called The Druidic Mind, I think. Um, uh, and, and there are these aphorisms over here that the author Ian Edwards has drawn out of that, um, that book the Druidic mind, just to help us to get a, an overview of what's important to Eric Howe. And yes, and throughout the book, he goes bit by bit through the guy's biography, his influences, which are both Western and Eastern, and talks about how relevant it is for our world today and uh, gives us ideas on how we can integrate all of this into our own lives. Ultimately, Howe didn't want to create a system. He rejected systems. He wanted to have a healthy population. That's what he wanted. He didn't believe that a healthy population could be healthy by adhering to a system. Uh, and so he made all of his work very easy to understand. And, and this was another reason, of course, why the uh, psychoanalysis community rejected him. He wasn't contributing to boosting the psychoanalysis vocabulary and uh, so on. He was just doing his own thing. Um, and uh, of course, that's the best thing that anyone could possibly have been doing for us as patients. Uh, but it's not what the uh, psychoanalysis community wanted. They wanted to boost psychoanalysis as a as a science and as a theory and as a as a uh, a solution to all things so yeah um this is somebody who didn't shy away from uh, using the ideas of world religions and traditions for the purpose of healing right of psychic healing. And for that sin, he has been shunned and rejected and um, uh, forgotten for all intents and purposes. And this book brings him back to the foreground. And I would be very surprised if this book doesn't have precisely the influence of bringing him back into the light. And uh, I, I expect <laughs> that within the next few years, how is a name which we will all be hearing a lot more regularly in the kinds of circles that you and I are interested in. Anyone watching this video in any case. So yes, if you're interested in perennialism in any way, this one really is worthy of your attention. All right, take care of yourselves and of each other. See you very soon with another video. See you. Bye.